Oh, hello there. Well, here I am at the rail in the church. We're doing communion on Sunday, and so I thought I would talk a little bit about communion. And this is one of the places we do it. Many people come and kneel here at the rail and receive the elements. And you know, before we do that, we always kind of go through a, an introduction, uh, the, the Great Thanksgiving, it's called. And I think sometimes people feel that maybe it's a bit rote that we do the same thing Sunday after Sunday, and maybe some people wonder who, who's the one who originated that. Well, actually, most of it comes directly from the scripture. In fact, I want to share it with you today. This is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, and this is what he says. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner may be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly. So we don't usually mention all that second part of that, but we do ask people to make a confession of their sin and a realization of the fact that they, we do have a need for receiving the body and blood of Christ. In fact, Holy Communion is, is a way of seeking what I might call a mystical union, uh, taking into our flesh, as, as stained as it is by the world, the very flesh of Jesus. And then, of course, moving on to the very blood of Jesus, taking that into our own life, symbolically realizing that he died, gave up his body for us, and that that blood was cleansing for taking away the power of sin. You know, we've started having these little disposable cups uh, that makes it much more sanitary and uh, easy to use. And they're, they're sealed in the bottom. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there's a small piece of bread. And then, of course, uh, the, the cup, and you can see the juice in there, uh, sealed on both ends. <laughs> I've had, I take this out to the shut-ins and use it for communion, and I've gotten more than one person say, oh, those are so cute. Now, I don't know that communion was ever supposed to be cute, but they are kind of cute in their versatility and being able to use them. So, hopefully, as we gather together around this rail uh, at the front of the church, in our seats, wherever we might receive communion, even in our homes as we're viewing uh, on the screen, that we're realizing that there's deep spiritual significance to what we're doing. We are allowing Christ to come into us in a physical way, but then also in a spiritual way. So I hope that as we take communion, whether you're doing it here in the church, whether you're doing it at home, whether you're doing it in another location, that you'll be very much aware of the fact that we are receiving the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross for us. Hope this has been a blessing to you. It's always a blessing for me to see you in this way. Thank you.